Okay, you want to make your sliding slab doors from this to this. Stick with us and we'll show you how. Okay, first you're going to want to start with three cross boards, all the same. Your top three, your uh, let's see, bottom, middle, and top for our door is 36 inches. So we cut three at 36. For our two lower outside pieces, we cut these at 33 and a half. Okay, so these slab doors are 36 inches across, and I believe 79 and a half tall. And that seems to be pretty standard in other homes I've lived in also. So these are hollow core doors with a uh, solid wood runner around the outside. And you can see here's your bottom. So we have this wood width going all the way up down the sides, and then we have a similar piece, tops and bottoms, nailed to. You could actually glue as well. I chose to use a finishing nailer. And we will uh, sand and paint these. Uh, I believe we're going to do these white. So we got the uh, three across, one on the bottom, one in the middle, one on top. And we're doing these at 36 inches each. Waiting for our camera to catch up. 36 inches. Now, we found center here, and that's at 39 and three quarters, right? So that'd be, that is 79 and a half then. For our two lower boards, we used 33 and three quarters. That one didn't come out exactly right on that cut. So measure twice, cut once. And now on the top piece, what we did is we actually, and I'll show you why, I learned this on the last door, we made these 33 and a half right here. And we did two of these. The reason why we did this, at the very top, depending how your, these are hanging doors by the way, if I didn't mention it in the beginning, uh, we have hardware that'll hang on the back, we have your wheel, and they'll run up and down in the track. We have found on the last set that we did, that the top sometimes would interfere if we had this right at the edge. Now I've seen people do it and make it work, but we like to have a little header trim piece that comes all the way across on the outside of the wall, and it really helps accent this. So we've figured leave a, a small gap here, and um, I think it's, uh, what's that look like, about a quarter inch? Let's see, yeah, it's just about a quarter inch there of gap. But we found if we use the uh, 33 and three quarters that we end up with this quarter inch gap on top. Like I said, not all these doors are square either. Um, so, like I said, this is uh, home base carpentry. You can probably find another channel if you want to see how the pros actually do it. Okay, so on our barn door look here, um, we don't use just a real high-tech approach. All we do here is um, I lay the board over, and let me just grab one that I did cut. And let me grab one here that is no good. And I'll show you what we used here in a minute on these boards. We have taken uh, quarter inch and half and uh, three eighths inch plywood before. And we've used the, that garage is a mess, we've been reorganizing around here, uh, using the big table saw and we strip them down um, into uh, three and three quarters wide or three and a half inch wide planks. That works good. That's a lot more work. Uh, so for a little extra money, I don't know what she spent, we bought a prepackaged uh, board that's like this. Kind of speeds it up, spend a few more dollars. Wasn't my choice on this one. So anyhow, what we do for these is, this is gonna be the opposite side. I've already cut this one. But, so there's our board that we cut. And what we actually do to make it easier, is I simply lay the corner, this corner to this corner, like this, and then I would come up to the other side, and I would make the same corner to corner mark here, 
I'll give you a little turn on the light here and see if that'll help at all. May not. So I'll go corner to corner here. And I'll come back here and check my corner to corner here. And then what I do is put a mark here with a marker. A mark here with a marker and draw a straight line across. You see it? And then I'll do the same thing up here. Where I'll put a mark on the marker here right in the corner. Take your time. And I'll do the same thing here. Marker and a marker. And I'll draw a straight line across. And then when I go over to the, uh, to the uh, saw there, I can just chop this down and follow my lines. And when I do, it drops right in. These boards come like this, and they're, I'm finding they're not the same width, and they're not straight. So because they aren't actually square, my cuts aren't coming out square. Uh, we wanted a rough look, so we're going to have that really rough look. We'll probably actually putty some of that in, too. The finisher putty. So that's that's how we make those cuts. Those are our measurements, and that's all there is to it. Um, I haven't used this wood before, and even with some mistakes, by not realizing it's not actually true-dimensional lumber. I mean, it's not square all the way up and down on the boards. Um, I'm only looking at about 15, 20 minutes with the work here uh, per door. So, what did we get this time? What we got... And I'll, uh, I'll see, see if I can throw a link up there for you. Um, this is uh, from Weber. Did I say that right? Weber, Weber Hardwoods. And it's weathered wall boards. And there's your actual sizes there. And it's pretty close. The lengths are, have been really good. The uh, widths have varied a little bit, um, as, as well as the thicknesses. Some are, you know, they, they could be 2, 3 sixteenths off, without a doubt. And over two, three feet, it shows up. There's the box. Uh, we got these at Home Depot, and they look to be exclusive by Home Depot. So if you want them, that's where you need to go. So remember the Home Depot. I'll uh, hope that'll focus. My phone just did this incredible update. I'm sure to make it better, but it's anything but better right now. My Android. So, but you get the pictures and adjust and seeing what's going on, and uh, they give you help for patterns and things. Home Depot has some fun stuff out there. I've even seen some of the pros using this stuff. So, um, I like it. Easy. Uh, by not ripping the boards down, it saved me time. I'm sure, I'm, I bet it cost, I bet this cost three or four times more than what it would be just buying a sheet of plywood. But what I don't get with the plywood is this is this rougher look. So we're gonna paint that and see how it goes and uh, I'll just add it on these videos as I get them done. So sorry to be long-winded. Send any of your comments for things I forgot. Oh, I know, what did I use to nail that up with? I just used, yeah, my garage is kind of a disaster right now. I just used, um, just an old finishing gun that I have here, a little brad nailer, and um, what size staples. I know if I was in the store, I'd be going, what size did that guy use? Because so I've got like six or seven different sizes. These are, looks like one inch. Yep. These are one inch tall. Man, this thing just won't focus. So that's one inch tall. And you can tell I grabs from my old stack here. Go and burn these up. Rustic wood, rustic staples. So these are just the, the simple U staples. And uh, they work great. These are these are one inch, and you can see as I set them up here, even with a little bit of recess, I'm nowhere near going all the way through. I did nail in the unsupported, the hollow side, just and it did pull, help pull it down a little bit, because um, like I said these things are a little warped and they're made to be weathered. But look, nothing went through, so Mama won't be mad at me for putting these in. And I had them recessed just a little bit, and I am not even going to uh, fill this in. Whatever paint gets in there, that's what I'm going to go with. I think after we sand it and paint it, it's going to be kind of a cool look for the bedroom. Okay, here on the bottom of the doors, because of the increased width, I simply used a second floor guide rail. So I bought another kit, and I just ran it out here. So that's how we can trap the door. And there's actually a groove up under here I can't show you, that 
by having a gap here on the bottom the board goes in it actually lets it slide where you can't see it in there but it's still trapped and same thing on the inside you can kind of see that gap right there wrong finger and then the top side There's your track mechanism, and I added a second track as well. So there's two tracks. Pretty easy to put up. I'm still able to put up our trim on the top. Now that gap we were talking about, I think in the video I say it's on the top, but I actually the top trim. I was mistaken. I actually meant that gap. Let's go down here on the bottom. You leave that quarter inch gap and that way you have the, uh, the trim meet that. Um, you could maybe even go a half inch on the bottom depending if you have if you have wood floors this might be okay. On the carpet. I think that half inch a half inch gap would have been better than this little quarter.